Hi, welcome to Numerics Video Blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. Joining me today for a fintech discussion is head of fintech Lee Schneider at Debo Voice and Plimpton. Welcome, Lee. How are you? Thank you very much, Jim. Nice to be here. Thank you, Lee. And please feel free to join Lee's podcast, Appetite for Disruption, available on iTunes as well. So, Lee, why don't we just jump right into it? Um, what makes a company fintech? I think that's the $64,000 question all the time. Or $64 billion or question. 60, depending <laughs> on your market cap, yes. <laughs> uh, it, it's a great question. And I sort of divide fintech into two very broad categories. The first category are companies that are regulated financial services industry participants who use technology in a variety of ways to deliver their services. So those are regulated fintech. And then the second category is unregulated fintech, which are really the technology providers to the regulated companies. And those regulated companies can be fintech companies, or they can be more traditional financial services companies. As you know, even the traditional financial services companies use technology for virtually everything that they do. So maybe all financial services companies are fintech companies. <laughs> well, especially nowadays, and everybody wants to be fintech. But arguably, this fintech sector is not new. I mean, you have technology companies that have been providing um, uh, innovations for financial institutions for decades at this point. Um, Absolutely. That you have institutions themselves who have uh, differentiated themselves by their technology platform. So uh, from is this just Silicon Valley hype and good naming. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's Silicon Valley or if it's Wall Street investment bankers who, who, are, who are giving the hype here. Maybe it's a combination of all of them. I, I, look, I don't think it's hype. I do think that, particularly since 2008, there have been a group of companies that people commonly refer to as fintech that are differentiating themselves from traditional financial services companies by the way they deliver their services. So to me, some of the sort of classic fintech companies are the online marketplace lenders, where they've really taken the lending process, put it all online, used a technology wrapper to deliver that service to people. Or the robo-advisors, and I know robo-advisor companies hate that terminology, but since it's so common, I'll use it. The robo-advisors, right, where you, you sign up for an account, you put in a bunch of information, and the computer creates a portfolio asset allocation for you, does the trading for you, monitors your account, does the rebalancing, et cetera, all through the use of technology. So sort of those two are what I think of as classic, pure fintech. But yet, according to a recent study by McKinsey, I think they've now identified over 30 distinct areas of fintech uh, exploration at this point, ra ranging from payments and lending in the traditional areas that we've been talking about, but also in infrastructure like Bitcoin uh, and some of those other sectors. So would you argue that no one is safe from fintech at this point? I, I would absolutely argue that no one is safe from fintech. Uh, look, when I talk with my traditional financial services clients, I always tell them up front, if you're not thinking of yourself as a technology company, you have to start thinking of yourself that way. The regulators expect you to be a technology company. Regulatory expectations around what information you can make available to regulators is, is all about the technology delivery of that information. The regulators are using technology to monitor the regulated companies. So, for example, in, in the brokerage industry, the SEC has very good information, good data, and is, is manipulating that data in a wide variety of ways to look for illegal trading patterns, insider trading, market manipulation, other types of fraud. You can go down the list. So, absolutely, technology is completely changing the face of financial services. That's been happening for many years and it's going to continue to happen into the future. In terms of the risk reward profile and balance, um, at some point, uh, you know, uh, when we look at some hedge funds now, you know, we're looking at more 
um, alternative type investments, um, whether it's real estate. Um, you know, there was an article the other day how Warren Buffett's out of equities. He's, you know, he's just buying up companies, looking at commercial real estate for uh, and, and whatnot. Um, you know, investors they want returns, and so yes, we can measure, but at some point they're going to individuals are going to want to see perform it. Can these fintech type companies, especially just on that on that side of the, on the of the coin, um, you know, deliver that kind of performance? Or is that what we're starting to see at this point? The the right answer from my perspective is that it's too early to tell how that's all going to play out. I do think that the more focus that is brought by a greater diversity of people to financial services and to the creation of technologies that will assist in financial services delivery and evaluation, the, the better the financial health of investors will be. But look, at the end of the day, it requires somebody to take control of their own destiny to a certain extent mm -hmm. and make decisions about how they want to conduct their financial life. But without tools to, to make it easier for people to do that, uh, it, it, it it's a it's a tough thing to do.